have gone the other way, Gus. Hi, good afternoon. I don't know what uh, um, information this has been provided by us, part of me standing up here. I don't have a bunch of prepared remarks. Um, but briefly, I, I, I'm not going to be able to answer a bunch of questions about the incident itself because it's not our investigation, but at least want to provide you what de detail I can on uh, our apprehension of the murder suspect here on Saturday evening. Uh, shortly uh, after 8 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, uh, this, this past Saturday, our uh, patrol officers had received information uh, about an uh, alleged homicide suspect being in our jurisdiction. Uh, it was alleged uh, the suspect was responsible for four homicides, I believe, in Butler Township, Ohio, or is being investigated by the Butler Township P Police Department. Uh, our officers, uh, of course, uh, once they received this information, uh, they began to proactively try to find the suspect and uh, began to check areas of interest like hotels, motels, etc. It wasn't immediately known uh, to us why uh, the suspect would be in Lawrence, but just merely that, that the suspect was in Lawrence. And so around about, really about a half hour later, uh, around 8.45 p.m., one of our patrol officers uh, had located the suspect vehicle near uh, 23rd Nosdal, kind of on the south side of town uh, for us. And the vehicle was going eastbound, and the officer followed and, uh, and attempted a traffic stop, and ultimately the uh, the car had pulled into a, a local, the parking lot of a local grocery store uh, in the thousand block of West 23rd. Uh, the officer had exited his patrol vehicle and the suspect also exited his vehicle and they met and uh, the suspect complied and you know fortunately everything you know he was apprehended safely and um, I, I most want to kind of highlight one is the communication between the law enforcement agencies that allowed for us to be able to apprehend this suspect. I mean uh, the bulk of the hard work if not all the hard work is going on uh, by the Butler Township Police Department. We were uh, just, you know, fortunately at the right place at the right time and being alert and able to, to identify the suspect. Also, I, I do want to recognize why I know there's a lot of attention on us uh, apprehending the suspect here in Lawrence, but what's more important is uh, that there's four people who have lost their lives, uh, allegedly at the results of this suspect. And I'm almost certain, I mean, I am certain that there's families grieving over this. And so we're grateful to be able to provide some sort of sense. It, may, it might not be the ultimate closure, but at least some sort of path to closure for them on the passing of their relative or friend or family member. On that note, I'll, 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 I'll take a few questions and keep in mind, I, I don't, I just, I'm limited on, on what I can talk about. Do we know what the motive was yet for the, when he got from Ohio when he killed the four people? Was no, that ever released? That, that's a good question and I'm assuming one that, that's being worked on by the investigators in Ohio. Can you talk to me a little bit? How you found out, or when you when, who alerted you that the suspect may be in your jurisdiction? And, and that sure, our dispatch uh, center had received uh, the information and then forwarded on to the officers. I don't specifically know as we're talking here exactly who forwarded on uh, to to the dispatch center, but they made our officers aware of this uh, the, the the possibility of the suspect being here within our jurisdiction, and then the officers began to to search for the for the suspect. When this first call went out that this suspect was on the loose, and I guess heading westbound or whatnot out of Ohio, did you ever suspect that he might end up here or the person might end up here? Because that's quite, it's quite, he traveled quite a distance. Sure. It's to my understanding uh, that is a part of the information that was relayed that the suspect had left westbound from Ohio, but there was also information that the suspect was likely in Lawrence. I know a good follow-up question would be is what that information is, and, I, and it's not exactly clear to me. But that, that of course, heightened the, the concern for our officers and making sure we could, we could find the suspect. I don't know if you can expand on, you said it wasn't immediately clear how they would have ended up in Lawrence. Is, is that clear now? I, that's a good question, and I assumed, uh, I assumed it was being asked by the investigators of why the, why the suspect was here in Lawrence. Um, do you know if the suspect was staying in a hotel while in Lawrence at all, or anything about his time here? I do not, and, and once again, I can assume the investigators are going to do uh, sort of a, what I want to say, um, kind of determine the suspect's actions after the incident, but I don't, I don't have that information. And that would be up to, to the investigators that are investigating the incident itself. Awesome. And could you speak a little bit about what the officer who arrested the suspect experienced on scene? You know, I haven't had the chance to speak with him personally, but I can imagine it, to remind you folks, especially uh, that are here locally, is that uh, about a little over a week ago, we had, uh, we were attempted to apprehend a uh, suspect in a double homicide, and that resulted in a vehicle pursuit and where the officers uh, were being shot at. And so, of course, whenever uh, going to arrest somebody, um, especially with the allegations as serious as being responsible for four murders, uh, an officer is always going to be concerned, not, not just for their safety, but for the safety of the public. And fortunately, we're able to apprehend the suspect um, with, without any, any sort of concern. And you were also able to identify him by his car, but do you know if that car belonged to him or who it belonged 
I do not. I don't. I don't know. I don't know who it belonged to. Your officers were able to respond effectively, efficiently. How proud are you of your officers? We're the department is very proud and one and, and able to observe uh, and, and read the reports. The officers' calm demeanor uh, definitely had to play a part in this. Um, you know, everybody reacts to certain different situations differently. We're all human. But for an officer to be standing in front of somebody that was suspected of four homicides and remained as calm as he did is, is very impressive. And we're very grateful. This officer stopped this car on, on his own, or were there more, more cars in the area more, or there? More cars uh, were ultimately en route, but the, he did uh, stop this person on his own. The situation sort of dictated the tactics on this one, and where the vehicle had pulled into a parking lot and the suspect had gotten out. I mean, ideally, you can wait to allow for more resources, more officers to show up. But that situation did not occur in this instance, and so the officer was able to engage the suspect, keep a calm demeanor, and allow for other officers to respond prior to um, placing the suspect under arrest. Thank you. Is, is, the, is the suspect still in your custody, or has he been transported to Ohio yet, or how's that, how's, what's the next process? That, that part of the process is really out of the hands of the Lawrence Police Department. Um, that is a I believe handled uh, the extradition process can be handled by the Douglas County District Attorney's Office and or the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. So I believe he still remains in the custody of the Douglas County Sheriff, but I don't want to mislead you folks. Sure. Okay. We, we can check with them on that. Gotcha. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, thank folks. You oh, thank you. Before you go, can you give us your name and spell oh. it for us? And, and Lieutenant, and it's Lieutenant David Ernst, E-R-N-S-T. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you.